My name is Dr. Chad Keats. I am a postdoctoral fellow at St. Nelson Mandela University and I'm affiliated with the South African Institute for Aquatic Biodiversity. And the reason for that is I'm a herpetologist and herpetologists work on reptiles and amphibians and amphibians are a very, very important component of wetlands and aquatic systems. And as you can see from here, all the way to there is just frogs. And if you look a bit closely, you might actually find a salamander or two. We don't get salamanders this part of Africa, but we get a lot of frogs. And if it wasn't for collections like this, there wouldn't be the great research that's happening all throughout Southern Africa. So what happens is that someone like me will go out into the field, doesn't matter where, we'll go collect frogs, we'll take voucher specimens that will get deposited in the museums here, and we'll take DNA. These samples get used for studies and they can be used by anyone in the country with the means to come to this, this, this place and use the facilities. So if you look um, from shelf to shelf, you'll see it's been very nicely curated and organized by Roger Bulls. Roger Bulls is a phenomenal curator and he's taken the time to, in addition to his uh, fish, actually build up the frog collection here. While it's not the biggest frog collection in the country, I can tell you one thing, it's one of the best organized I've ever seen. It's really good and it has some phenomenal samples, which I have drawn from for my own studies. I know a lot of the herpetologists around the country constantly come here, they come to look at the samples and use the DNA in their phylogenetic reconstructions, which they use to fix the taxonomy and really order what's going on in the country. So I've got some really interesting frogs here, and I might as well grab this guy right here. And what we have are some of the frogs in the collection. This one here is one of the really special ones. It's one of the ones that a lot of people from around the world will come to South Africa to look at. And that is the Cape Rain Frog. It's the one that looks like an avocado. So if you've ever looked at YouTube or Facebook and you've seen the avocado meme frog, this is the guy. It squeals. It's not a particularly pretty looking frog, but uh, it's definitely one that's close to my heart. And over here we've got the foam nest frog, one of the arboreal species. So what that means is it likes to climb trees. Um, you often find them in the northern reaches of South Africa. They're found often in um, the Miombo woodland. And what they do is they form nests, or foam nests, above water sources. And as, as soon as it rains, the water will go through the foam, drop into the foam, and the foam will drip into the water below. And then from there the tadpoles will emerge. So that's a very specialized life cycle. But this is just two of thousands of frogs in the collection. And if you took the time to go have a look, you'd find so many weird and wonderful frogs here. And if you think it's cool looking at these things up close, you'll never be surprised how much is in the genetic section upstairs. We've got so many samples which scientists from around the world are using to look deeper at the DNA and the genetics of these animals. So I was mentioning earlier how I'm a postdoctoral fellow. I'm quite young. But if it wasn't for the research that uh, my predecessors had done, I would not be able to do the research that I did today. So I rely on the research that's been done and it's been housed in this institution. So people like Roger Bulls, Paul Skelton, they're absolutely great. And if it wasn't for them, there wouldn't be research, there wouldn't be samples for the rest of us to work on. So although I'm 28 years old, I can pick up one of these and go, wow, this is from 1962. So I can look back. And this is almost like a time capsule. So if it wasn't for collections like this, I couldn't have a look at what a system was like so long ago. And by looking at these animals and taking specimens from all over the country, we make it possible for someone to study any animal in a lot of detail. So if right here we've got all of the clawed frogs, if someone decided they wanted the genetics on the clawed frogs, they just come to the collection, they have a look, and they go, wow, you've got a phenomenal collection here from multiple different localities, and I can work on this. So for example, you've got Eastern Cape, Western Cape, Lesotho. There's just lots of variation here. And without collections like this, you wouldn't be able to build robust data sets that would enable you to work on these things. So the reason that we study frogs is because they're such an important part of ecosystems. They contribute to multiple levels of the food chain. And what that basically means is that they're both predator and prey. They are food to so many different organisms and they prey on smaller organisms. They also take pressure from the aquatic system and they move it into the terrestrial system. So what this means is because they start their life in the water as tadpoles, they both predator and prey in the water. And as they grow up, they grow legs and they, and they, they take their tail in, they hop onto land and then once again become food and they, they eat other things on land as well. So they're a very important part of the ecosystem both in the water and out the water. And without them, food webs would collapse, ecosystems would collapse 
and they're also very important because they are indicators of the quality of water health. Often you'll find high diversities and lots of different types of frogs in areas where the water is cleaner. When you start to hear that an area is dominated by the calls of maybe a single frog, you can start to wonder maybe it's because the water isn't so clean. And we often find that in areas around the country, as soon as water becomes polluted, only certain species of frogs can survive and the more delicate ones die. So if we want to look at a way of understanding the quality of our water, one of our most valuable resources, we need to look at the frogs. And in order to understand the value of frogs, we need to understand their taxonomy. So that's why we work on the collections. We see how many species we have, how many we need to describe. And by doing that, we, we develop these baseline data that we can use to build on our ecology, build on our conservation, and really protect animals for generations and generations to come. So we've got ornate frogs here. We've got grass frogs here. We've got the clawed frogs here. You've got sand frogs here. And we've got a massive gap here. And what this gap is for is for young scientists. So if you're keen to get into science, to really add something to our understanding of the biological world, SciHub is waiting for people like you. People with passion, people who love frogs. Because let's be honest, not enough people love frogs. So if you love frogs and you want to be a scientist one day, we want to see you in this collection filling up these racks. Because people in 2017 are going to meet the people that worked on it to death. So hope you enjoyed. I hope you want to be a scientist because I'm telling you I'm having so much fun in the SciHub collection.